and welcome to the morning assembly. This morning we are singing the song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, a beautiful song that we have often sung in the morning assembly when we were together. And we're going to sing that led by Samara Jacob. That was beautifully sung, and what a beautiful reminder of how important and lovely it is to, sweet it is to trust in Jesus. We're continuing our study this morning uh, with Genesis chapter 10. Uh, not a very easy, easy chapter. If you read, please turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 10, and I'm going to take you through this chapter. You know, there are many people who uh, find it difficult to actually find any lesson. And especially when we have our Bible reading, you know, when you go through genealogies in the Bible, oh, that's tough. It's tough to pronounce the words. And, you know, you wonder why God put such, um, such chapters in the Bible. 
Uh, is there anything to learn from such genealogies? Genesis chapter 10 and verse 1 says, These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. And as you read through this chapter, from verse 2 to 5, you'll read about the sons of Japheth. And then from verse 6 all the way down to 20, you read these are the sons of Ham. And then verse 21, all the way down to 31, you have the sons of Shem, who was the oldest son. And then verse 32 says, these are the clans of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies, uh, in their name spread abroad on the earth. And from these, the nation spread abroad on the earth after the flood. But you know, boys and girls, there are some very, very valuable lessons. If you read through, it's all about names and where they came, where they settled, where they went, and um, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the uh, gist of it. You know, the sons of Japheth, he is the youngest, the sons of Japheth. He had seven sons, and the sons of Japheth are the ones that spread across Europe and Asia. The sons of Ham, he had four sons, and they spread towards Southwest Asia. That means, uh, you know, the Middle East area, and then into the Canaanite area, that is Canaan, and then they went down into Africa. And the sons of Shem are the ones that settled down in the Middle East area, the Arabs and the people of that area. And we're going to read a few names from these verses. As you can see here, the sons of Japheth, it says Goma. Goma is the root word from which Germany comes from, G-M-R. And for, if you look at the root word in German also, Germany comes from this word. The word Meshek, right? that's a word that comes from Moscow. And so the Russians... Uh, come from that area. Tarshish, we know, is Turkey. It's the place, the city where, where Paul was born. In the Sons of Ham, we read of Kush, which is today's Ethiopia and, and Africa going down. Egypt, we already know. And Canaan, we know, is in the Middle East, in the nation of Israel. And then you go down to Kasluhin. And that is, uh, it is clearly written in verse 14, from whom the Philistines came. The Philistines means they came up from Egypt and they also came from Cyprus and those areas. Those are the Philistines who settled there. The Sinites in verse 15, probably referring to, probably referring to China, Sino, right? So that is about the Sinites. So these are some of the few words and then in verse 22, we read about Eber. And very likely that word Eber is the root word for Hebrew. And you can see how from Eber, you know, you have the descendants Joktan, and then you have the descendants where Abraham comes from. So these are a few of the words that we know. And, uh, you know, the Lord of Research has gone into this chapter. And uh, that's how we know that this is where. So that means most of the Indians, particularly from north and along the uh, um, western coast of India, come from Japheth. And Africa, most of them come from Ham, right? And a lot of Europe and Asia, they come from Japheth. And then the Middle East, the Jews and the Arabs, they come from Shem. Okay. Uh, another way of classifying these three sons is that the sons of Shem, right, were mostly uh, of a spiritual nature, philosophical nature. Many of the religions originate from Shem, right? The sons of Japheth were the ones who were scientific, the thinkers, the uh, technical people. They, they are the ones who invent. And the sons of Ham were the athletes, the hard workers, right? And that is the, uh, that's another way of classifying. But 
there are three lessons that I want to bring to you this morning from this chapter. It is very important, you know, boys and girls, for, the, for a Jew, it was very important to know his lineage. And I, and I believe that Moses wrote down these genealogies. You know, till the time of Moses, these genealogies were spoken. They were, they were told from son to son, from generation to generation. And then Moses is the one who finally wrote it down. And I believe the reason why Moses wrote it down is that he wanted the people of Israel themselves to know their heritage, where they came from, and also who were the nations that they were going to encounter when they entered the land of Egypt, uh, land of Canaan. You know, uh, your history teaches you a lot about yourself, your family background, the things that have happened in your life. You know, very often when we read the Bible also, and we look at the person's history and how he came about, we are able to understand why that person did what he did. If you ask a psychologist, he will also look back, dig deep into that person's history, family history and ancestry, and find out, what is the difficulties? What were the problems they encountered? And that forms a big part of who we are. It forms a big part of who we are. There's both good and bad, boys and girls. It's not just, uh, you know, everything good or everything bad. For example, we know that because of Ham's foolishness and, um, you know, because of the sin he committed, Noah had cursed Ham and cursed his, uh, his, his son Canaan. But... Does that mean that the people under them are cursed? No, it was something that happened at that time. right? But we cannot presume that everybody else is cursed because of that. right? But it is a, sometimes it may produce scars in your background. You know, but this is good to know. It is good to know our ancestry. Number one, people are quick to forget God. You know, as you see these nations... Uh, expanding. They've just come out of the flood, isn't it? Shem, Ham and Japheth have experienced that flood, that disaster, the destruction. And as these nations grew and as they moved from place to place, they would have seen the after effects of the flood. And yet you see how many nations have developed their own cultures, their own religious ideas, you know, and they have forgotten the God of Noah. And that's a big lesson for you and for me. You know, you read of Nimrod. I want you to look at verse 7, verse 8. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Who is who is um, Nimrod? He is just the grandson of Ham, the great grandson of Noah. And he would have heard about Noah's curse on his father, that Ham and Canaan are going to uh, serve the other brothers. And Nimrod would have said, who is this? Who out there? He cursed me. You think I'm going to live under that curse? And he would have rebelled against that. You know, this word mighty hunter, when we read it, we may assume that it was a hunter of animals. It was likely that he was a hunter of men, a man who killed other people and went on to establish cities and to rule over them, to prove himself. He, uh, the, this phrase, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, probably means that he rebelled against God. He stood against God, face you know, put his face against God. And you see all that he conquered. The beginning of his kingdom, Babel, and that's what we're going to read in the next chapter, chapter 11. Erek, Akkad, Kalne in the land of Shinar. He goes to Assyria and builds Nineveh. You know, Nineveh still exists today. It's one of the oldest cities in the Bible. Right? So, People are quick to forget God. And remember that, boys and girls, it's an important lesson. When we, you know, uh, in our own thinking, become arrogant, become proud of who we are, we set out to accomplish things, as we're going to read in chapter 11, you know, and we think that we can do anything in the eyes of God, against God. 
many, many people today live like that. And you know, that's the thing that God hates. And many who have tried to do that later on, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, in the same place that Nimrod built, built Babel, we have Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar also stood up, you know, in the book of Daniel and he looked at his kingdom and he became so proud of his kingdom. That's very dangerous, very dangerous. When you, when you have that inkling that I'm proud of my looks, my position, my academics, my abilities, my athletics, be careful, boys and girls. God will humble us. God will humble us. People are quick to forget God. Number two, people are quick to forget the oneness of the human race. Right? This chapter reminds us that we all come from Noah. And Noah came from Adam. You know, when we read this chapter, it will humble you to realize that everyone around you is your brother and sister. That you have no right to look down on anyone else, that you have no right to take greater pride in your own culture and put down somebody else's culture. You can feel happy about, you know, the great things in your culture, no doubt about that. But never, never take pride over your, in your culture over somebody else's. There is great harm and danger. That racism stems from forgetting that you and I all came from the same place, the same person. You and I all, by the grace of God, survived the flood when God could have easily destroyed all of us. Right? And all over the world, slavery stems from racism. Stems from racism. You take this community of people and you enslave them. You know, even today, slavery exists. There are some of our parents who are working in, in organizations that go against, you know, that are fighting slave trade in our nation. You know, boys and girls, just around the outskirts of Bangalore, there are people living in slavery. Very sad situation. Very, very sad situation. You know, it is true. It is real. And it's because we all forget that we all come from one nation. The person of a different color, the person of a different community, person of a different language. He is my brother. He is my sister. I dare not look down on him. I dare not look down. We are quick to forget. Look at what it says in verse Acts chapter 17 and verse 26. God made from one every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. From one, we've all come, all of mankind, to live on all the face of the earth. And God has determined the appointed time and the appointed place, the boundary of their habitation. That's the sovereign will of God. Remember, you are one among many as a brother and sister. Third point, God, despite the fact that people are quick to forget God, people are quick to forget the oneness of the human race, God wants all people to hear about his offer of salvation. As I kept on saying in the last two, three days, you know, the offer of salvation that is given in the Bible is not just for one particular community or one particular language group or one particular race of people, not at all. It is for all mankind. Let me read to you this chapter, verse uh, Acts 14, verse 16 to 17. In the generations gone by, God permitted all the nations to go their own way. And yet he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good. He gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Who gave you these things? That's what this verse is saying. Who gave you the food, the seasons, the rains? It is God himself to prove his existence. When you look at creation, and when you look at the food on your table, remember the God who sustains you. Genesis chapter 10 is a reflection of how we all came. Well, from where we all came, ultimately we all came from one man, from Noah, and from his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Remember the God who saved us. Remember that we are all one. 
We all are brothers and sisters in the human race. And we dare not look down on anybody else, no matter for any reason, whatever. Remember that God's offer of salvation is available to all. Let's pray. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chapter, difficult as it is. Yet, Lord, there is every reason why you have put it in the Bible. Chapters like these, Lord, remind us of who we are, our ancestry, where we came from, and the fact that we are all one. We thank you, Father, that you have reminded us of this. And, and we, we pray that as we go into the day, we might learn to have respect for one another, learn to appreciate the different cultures and languages, and learn to um, humble ourselves before you. I pray this morning for the vaccination drive that is going to happen in our school. Uh, we pray for your protection upon all our staff and every person who enters the campus. Keep each one of them safe and protected from the disease. We pray for the Baptist Hospital staff. Your blessing be upon them. Lord, we pray this morning for all our teachers, office staff, security, housekeeping. We pray for every student, every family member, your peace and blessing be upon us. We pray for those who are sick, those who are in hospital, those who are in sorrow. May divine comfort and healing be their portion today. We pray and ask this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of announcements, boys and girls. Today, um, we have the vaccination drive, as I said. I hope you all enjoyed the house meetings that you had last week. Uh, we'll try to have these meetings every month. Uh, now, the uh, each house has been given a Google Classroom and an invitation will come to you, uh, you know, right from LKG all the way to class 12 to join this Google Classroom. Uh, it will come to your school email address. And uh, so I want you to uh, check on that. Click on uh, accept invitation and then you'll become part of that house in Google Classroom, your house captains, your house counselors will be posting a lot of material in that Google Classroom that is for your house as you prepare for the inter-house competitions through the year. There's also a quiz called The Road to Tokyo. This is the Olympics quiz, uh, and any student can take it. This is given by the council uh, in New Delhi, and uh, it's there in your Google Classroom. want to encourage every student to take part in this quiz because you'll get at least a participation certificate. And if you do well, you know, you will get even better prizes. So I want you to go to that Google Classroom link and click on it and just answer the questions. Anybody, even teachers, staff, anybody can do, uh, and can do that. Okay, remember you have three weeks more for your tests. For some of you, the orals are going to start in, in kindergarten as well as in some other classes. You know, the orals will start early. And then your exams, your unit test one begins on July 9th. So be careful, study well, and do your tests well. I also want to tell you, boys and girls, next week we're going to have a guest speaker with us, our uh, favorite, Pastor Vasudevan. He's going to be speaking to us every day in the morning assembly. And we're going to listen to God's wonderful word through him. And even after the morning assembly, if you would like to personally speak, with Pastor Vasudevan, we can arrange uh, some meetings at one o'clock every day. Have a good day and God bless you. It's over to our school captain, Grenville Austin. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good things come to those who wait. We are all waiting for the pandemic to end. Here are a few words of encouragement. A Swahili proverb reads, Patience attracts happiness. It brings near that which is far. The end of the pandemic may seem miles away, but let us be patient. Things will return to normal soon. I would now like to invite you to stand to attention for the National Act.
Let us give our utmost for the highest today. Assembly dismissed.